Hi everyone, this is Dr. Manu Krishnan K. In the part 1, we have discussed about the upper end of humerus and today we will be discussing the shaft of the humerus which extends all the way between the upper end and the lower end. So the end air shaft can be divided into three parts respectively. The upper one third, middle one third and the lower one third. So let's discuss each of them separately. Considering the upper one third, you can clearly see a demarcating border here that is nothing but the anterior border of the humerus. And there are two more respective borders, one which comes at the side of the head that is the medial border and the other one which comes on the opposite side that is the lateral border. So together we have three borders namely the anterior border, the medial border and the lateral border here. So when we consider the upper one third, the clear external features that can be visualized are the groove, the vertical groove that you can observe here. That vertical groove is nothing but the bicipital groove which is guarded on either sides by a vertical impression that is a lip, the medial lip and the lateral lip. So these three points give attachment for the muscles. So we have the bicipital groove in the middle, the medial lip and the lateral lip here. And as you continue to observe the middle one third of the shaft of humerus, you can continue to see the anterior border the lateral border and the medial border but when you just turn it towards the lateral aspect here you can clearly visualize a v-shaped tuberosity that is known as the deltoid tuberosity which gives insertion for the deltoid muscle so this v-shaped impression is very important when it comes to the androlateral surface of the middle one third of the shaft which gives insertion for the deltoid muscle and on the opposite side when we consider the medial border you can see a rough impression where I am touching right now so this point over here is the middle one third and on the medial border we have a small 5 centimeter attachment point which is for the insertion of coracobrachialis muscle. So we have seen in the middle one third delta tuberosity and the impression for the insertion of coracobrachialis. Then when we move downwards we have the lower one third of the shaft which is again having anterior border which is not that well marked but it is curved and we have the medilateral border which is continuing downwards as the lateral supracondylar line and on the medial aspect we have the medial border continuing as the medial supracondylar line. So these are the important external features which you can find on the shaft of the humerus. Thank you.